I am super excited to welcome our special guest for tonight. She is Brittany Miller, a highly rated social media consultant, educator, and speaker with experience helping personal brands and service providers. She helps them enhance their visibility, their impact, and profits effectively through social media. She works with groups, individuals, and organizations to amplify their message, and she helps empower them to show up as their authentic selves online. She is a member of GoPro Speakers, which is a Toastmasters club founded in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. She has a clear understanding of the social media needs for those who speak professionally, whether it is speaking as an entrepreneur or in any other way, such as Linda or I do. Please help me welcome Brittany Miller to share how to build your professional brand using social media. Brittany Miller, everybody. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I am so excited and honored to be here, especially because chatting all things social media is one of my favorite things to do. So we are going to dive in, but before I do, I was asking this a little bit at the beginning. I was curious which social media platforms everyone is active on. And when I mean active, you are posting at least once a week. That's gonna give me a little bit of an idea as to what you're comfortable with. So I'm gonna just say a platform out loud and if you wanna raise your hand or raise your virtual hand, that would be wonderful. So who actively uses Facebook? Any hands? Got a couple, all right. How about Instagram? Yeah, we have a couple as well, okay. Not quite as many. How about LinkedIn? Okay, yeah, more on LinkedIn, fantastic. And TikTok, anyone actively on TikTok? We've got a couple of people. Nice, yes. All right. And how about X? Let's add in X or Twitter, however you want to call it. I'm not a big Xer. I don't even know if I'm saying that correctly. It seems so strange now. <laughs> but there are so many other platforms besides that. Those are kind of the main ones. That gives me a really good idea as to where our knowledge of social media is and can just help me be mindful when I'm explaining some things to you. So we are going to dive in. And as we do, I really want to encourage you to tag me on social media if I share any mic drop moments or major takeaways. So feel free to pull out your phone, take a photo of the screen. I am more than happy if you do that. If you post it on LinkedIn, feel free to tag me. If you post it to your Instagram stories, feel free to tag me. My username is BrittanyMiller.biz. And I am going to share or save some time at the end for some questions. So if you do have any questions, what I'd love to encourage you to do is write a capital Q in the chat and then type out your question. And then at the end, when I go through, I can quickly go through the chat, answer those questions first. And if we have time, I will take any other questions from the group as well. All right. And let's go over what we are covering today because I like to set clear expectations so you know where we are heading. We are going to be talking about some of the key elements that help make up your professional brand. And these elements are so key to help you create the content on your social media. And we're gonna then talk about why you should actively create content that helps to build your professional brand. We're then gonna also dive into helping you decide which social media platform you should really focus on and really come to the decision for what works best for you. I'm gonna give you some prompts and some questions to think about and a little bit of guidance there. And then because I love to provide value, and make sure that every pre presentation I do provides some actionable takeaways. I do have a bonus at the end, and I'm gonna provide you with three types of posts you can create and share next week. 
You can do all three. You can just choose one. And I'm going to dive into that with you as well. So by the end of this training, my goal really is to encourage you to be a little more intentional with your social media and really think about if you are putting a post online, how it's really building your credibility and building your professional brand and helping to enhance that, how it's helping you to create connections through each piece of content you share. And in doing so, hopefully attracting those opportunities that you're desiring, whether that is maybe being hired for a different position, maybe being hired as a speaker or to really showcase your writing skills and get new clients that way or PR opportunities. I'm going to share with you all of that, or that is my goal and hopeful takeaway by the end of this training today. So let's start at the basics and talk about what is a professional brand. You may have heard the term personal brand and that's used quite a bit. And I like to kind of change that up and say professional brand because there are elements of our personal lives that we definitely want to infuse into our content and our professional brand anyways, but there's also elements of our personal life that we want to keep personal and that is more than okay. But building a professional presence can be really helpful in getting you those opportunities that you're looking for or being top of mind to people. So when I define and talk about professional brand, what I mean is thinking about how you want your name and your reputation to be perceived by others, whether it's in a room and in person, like at a networking event or in the online space like on social media. And we're really looking at these elements around your career, your industry that you want to be seen as the expert in, your interests or values, and the ultimate actions that you take. How I like to kind of bring this together into perspective is to really think about when you're not in a room, what are people saying about you? Or you can flip it around and when there's an opportunity, who is saying your name because they've thought about you? That is building your professional brand. And one of the reasons why this is so important, actually, this is a quote I want to share with you first. I love this quote. Who knows you is more important than who you know. Build a brand. And each of us is a brand. And it's really important that we are being really mindful of how we're building that. And social media can be one of the fastest ways to help us gain that extra exposure, but we can also be mindful of how we are creating that presence online. And so this is, yeah, something to think about who, know, who knows you is more important than who you know. This quote was by James Clear. He's the author of Atomic Habits. If you haven't read that book, highly recommend. And also if you are not on his newsletter, it's a fantastic one that he sends out once a week, also recommend. So let's talk about the six elements that help you to create your professional brand. And I'm looking at this as a speaker, but just insert whatever your title is or however you want people to perceive you in the online space. And these are the six things you want to think about. First one is your opinions. When it comes to building your professional brand, sharing your opinions and thoughts is really important. There are some things you want to be mindful of, though. If you are not a politician or you're not in the religion space, those are two topics you just wanna be really mindful of and potentially avoid when it comes to building your professional brand. If it is infused into your brand in some way, it may be fine, but those are two topics that I usually coach clients through kind of staying away from. Now, in your personal side of things and in your personal life, if that's something you wanna really talk about, totally okay. But in your online presence, be mindful of that. For myself, when I'm sharing opinions, I'm always bringing it back to the industry that I'm in. So I'm going to share opinions and thoughts around social media, the latest Instagram trend, 
or LinkedIn updates. I might even stir some feathers by saying how hashtags are dead and providing my thoughts and opinions around that. So you want to think about your area of expertise, your industry, and ask, okay, what kind of opinions or thoughts can I share and always bring it back to that. Another one that's really important are your values. Think about one to three of your values and how you can really display that on a consistent basis through your brand. I have a client who is a leadership coach and a leadership speaker, but he also infuses kindness into all of his content and elements because that's a big value of his. So he's going to always talk about maybe a kind act he noticed an organization did that really showcased a leadership style. And he infuses that into his content as well. And then he becomes known in that way, which is fantastic. I also have another client who is in the interior design space, but sustainability is a big part of their values. So they're going to talk about that and make sure that they're known and seen in that way online. So think about your values and how you can consistently showcase and share that as well. This is probably the most important one. It may also feel like the most obvious, but when it comes to social media, it is very easy for us to feel like we have to be like someone else um, in the online space when we truly only need to be ourselves because being ourselves is truly our superpower. That is what attracts people to us and helps us connect with the right individuals and even the right opportunities. So stay true to who you are Allow yourself to infuse your personality in the type of content you create or the captions you're writing. For myself, I am an introvert at heart. And so I'm going to maybe share some content that plays on my introverted style. And I'm going to show you an example of that. I'm also incredibly bubbly and energetic. So I, who you see me on this call right now, if you met me in person, I am the same person. I bring this type of energy there. So do the same thing for yourself. If you are trying to be someone you're not online, for example, maybe you're trying to be really energetic and loud and bold, but then when someone meets you in person and you're more reserved or you're a little bit different, there creates a disconnect there. If it doesn't seem like it's the same as who you were perceived as online to when they met you in person. And when there's that disconnect, it can create distrust. So the best thing you can do is be yourself. You'll also avoid content creation burnout because you're not just trying to be somebody else. You're being who you are. Talking about your services is really key. And this allows people to know what you're up to, how you can support them, and it keeps you top of mind. So if you are wanting to be shown as a facilitator, Make sure you are going to be sharing elements or showing elements of you facilitating and talking about those opportunities or behind the scenes as you are becoming better at a speaker and you're attending a Toastmaster meeting. Don't be afraid to share that kind of stuff. It's really important and it keeps you top of mind to others. Sharing your personal stories is incredibly important as well. This is how we truly connect with other people. So choose the elements of your stories that, again, relate back to you as a business owner. Some of my personal stories relate to being an introvert as well, but an introvert as a business owner who is also a professional speaker now. So I'm going to share stories that may inspire or help other people relate to me. So look at your own stories that might inspire others as well. And then lastly, showcasing your expertise. So really allow yourself to be like, okay, who do I want to be seen as the go-to person for X, Y, or Z? For me, it's social media consulting and coaching. So I want to make sure that I am talking about it, sharing, providing value or tips that help to build my credibility in that area. So all six of these elements really do showcase your, help you build your professional brand. And you can then take these elements and infuse it into the content you share online. And that's going to be really power and effective because your professional brand helps to differentiate you within your industry. There are other social media consultants and speakers out there. 
there are other facilitators out there. There are other blog writers out there. So how are you standing out? Your professional brand helps you to do that. And really, the goal is to make you go from being a choice when someone may want to hire you or work with you to becoming the choice. That is the ultimate goal. And social media can truly help you do that. I often get asked, well, do I really need a social media for my business or if I'm an employee or if I am a speaker? And in short, the answer is no. You don't really need social media at all. However, depending on your goals, social media can help you get to those goals a lot faster. It can help expose you to people from around the world. Being a virtual group, you're experiencing that right now with having people all across the US, Canada, and Japan. And it can also just help you get opportunities you didn't even know were there. And so being active with your presence and building your presence is key. And I want to share with you a little story about how this works and why this is important. So a client of mine, she is a color consultant. So what she does is she helps people find their best color. She does this really cool draping process. If you've never done it before, highly recommend. It is super cool. Any person should do it. It's amazing. But what happens first, especially if you're starting out, is people don't know what you do or who you are. Now, my my client, she is based in Vancouver, and there are other color consultants like her. So how she sometimes gets discovered by people is sometimes through social media, but often it is people who are Googling color analyst in Vancouver. And her name comes up, but along with a lot of other people. And my client has a ton of five-star reviews, but so do a lot of th these other people. But what my client has and what she's been doing really well is building her online presence. And so when she gets a new client, she often asks them, well, how did you hear of me or why did you choose me? And this is what a lot of them have told her. They find her, so they Google her and they find her. They check out her Google reviews. They then go to her website. They see what she's all about. And then they go to her social media and they start to consume her content. And they get an idea as to who Joy is. They then check out more content and they get an idea as to what the process is actually like. And then they hear testimonials from clients who've actually had a color, anal a color session done. They then just discover that Joy loves mountain biking and running, and she has a really cute fur baby that's a Bernadoodle, and they feel even more connected to her. And by posting consistently on her feed, she's built like, know, and trust with these people through all of the different pieces of content she shared. And because of that, they told her they chose her. And my client now has been booked out consistently for you know, three months in advance, which has been amazing. And so that's the power of how social media can help you, regardless if you are a speaker, a writer, a color consultant, a social media manager, whatever business or industry you're in, it can be so, so powerful. It really helps you stay top of mind. The thing to remember though is social media doesn't just get you clients or opportunities overnight. It usually takes on average about three to six months of consistently building your presence and staying top of mind to people, building that like, know, and trust through the different pieces of content you create. So how do we create that like, know, and trust on social media? It's through the content we share. And we want to think about the content that we share. We want to see, try our best to have it evoke some sort of emotion. So if someone reads a quote or a story, are we creating emotion or are we getting them to think a little bit differently? 
One of the best ways to do this is by sharing our own stories and stories that may connect with them, but also relates to our industry or the area we want to be seen as an expert in. It incorporates your personality. So I've done videos before where I talk about the life of an introvert, of, of an introvert or of my journey of having to get comfortable showing my face on the camera. You want to make sure it also shows what you do. So if you are facilitating, ask somebody to take a quick picture of you. If you are going to be attending a virtual Toastmasters group, you know, take a photo of you, set up your camera, take a photo of you talking to your computer, even if it's after the meeting's done or on another day. But any way you can plant seeds and show people in action what it is that you do, that helps you stay top of mind. And really, we're going to create content with all of these elements that build our professional brand because that is truly how you're going to build that like, know, and trust factor and start to attract those clients, those opportunities to you. So when I talk about content, because I know we have a few different people in the room here who might be really savvy with social media and others who might be at more of the beginner stage. When I'm saying content, really what I'm referring to is the digital visual elements that you are sharing online whichever platform you're sharing on. So this can be the caption that you're writing. So the words that you're sharing, it might include a video that you post, or you can go live on LinkedIn or Instagram. It might be a short video you create for TikTok or reels on Instagram. You could be showing behind the scenes of your day or an event that you're at on stories. This is usually on Facebook or again on Instagram. Instagram has a lot of different features you can use. The graphics or also something that we like to call carousels that you can create on different platforms or just sharing simply a photo of yourself. These are all elements of content and you want to infuse all of the elements of your professional brand into these different types of content. Now you don't have to create all of these types of content, just pick and choose. And depending on the platform you're on, you may not be able to create some of these pieces of content because some of them are just con uh, platform specific. So some are just for Instagram, some are just for LinkedIn, some just for TikTok as an example. But again, we want to infuse your professional brand into all of it. So I often get asked, do I have to be on every platform? And the answer is no, you do not have to be on every platform. However, I do recommend you just choose one platform and get comfortable with that platform first. Start to build your social media skill set and muscle and get consistent with the content you're creating, get more familiar with those features and then you can add on a different platform. Because creating content, it does take time, it does take effort and energy, but being consistent is so worth it, and you wanna find the platform that's gonna work best for you. One thing I do recommend though is, let's say you know you just wanna be on Facebook, but maybe down the road you wanna be on Instagram or LinkedIn or TikTok, I recommend getting your username for those platforms. So when I'm talking about username, I'm talking about where it has the at BrittanyMiller.biz. That's my username. And I have the same username for consistency on all the different social platforms that I am on, even if I'm not active on that platform. As an example, I really love consuming TikTok content, but I don't really create TikTok videos right now. I don't have the time or capacity. But I have the username BrittanyMiller.biz there because I think down the road, that's something I would like to do. Now for you, how do you decide which platform to choose? I could do a whole training on demographics for different platforms and depending on your goals. But the one thing I want to focus on are three questions I want you to ask yourself to help you decide is, where does my ideal client hang out? Or where are those opportunities most likely? For myself, when it comes to speaking opportunities, LinkedIn is a fantastic place because that's where a lot of event planners or 
HR managers or engagement specialists are who are going to hire a speaker like me. You also want to think about what platform do you enjoy creating content on? So if you love creating videos, get on TikTok. That is fantastic. If you love taking photos or creating graphics and you love doing videos like st stories, then Instagram is going to be a great platform for you. If you were like, I don't know how to even use Instagram, then maybe don't start there. Go to the platform that feels easiest for you because then you will be the most consistent. And then you want to ask yourself, okay, what is my capacity and where is my skill set at right now? So when we're talking about capacity, we're looking, okay, how much time do I have? Um, do I have the time to even learn how to create a reel or edit videos? What kind of digital assets do I have? If I don't have any branded photos of myself or I don't know how to edit videos, then maybe using Instagram or maybe TikTok isn't the right place for me. So you want to kind of ask yourself that. One of the best platforms to get started on, in my opinion, is Facebook, if that's what you're most com com comfortable with. Or I really, really do love Instagram because that's going to teach you all of the skill sets you need that can literally be applied to any of the platforms. You want to know how to use video, create a reel. You can easily apply those skill sets to TikTok. LinkedIn is also a really, really great platform to start with too. That's, an, that's one that where I would really recommend everyone getting on. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. I can definitely help you with that. Now, when it comes to brainstorming topics, this is often where most people get stuck. So if you've ever said, I don't know what I'm supposed to post about, I've got your back because I've put together a resource for you on the three posts you can create right now and then post those next week. So the three posts that I'm going to encourage you to create is the first one is one where you can promote your services or what it is that you do or desire to be doing. So if you're blogging, I want you to take a photo of you blogging or share a photo of your blog and then talk about it. I'm going to go into that a little bit more. The next one is one where you can showcase your expertise, but in a really fun graphic, because this can be really easy for people to consume. And then the third one is one where you can connect with your audience by doing a little bit of storytelling, sharing, you know, the five professions you had before you started your business. And with all of these, I want you to think about how you're infusing your professional brand into each of these posts. So as an example, what I do have here is if you want to take your phone, you can go and scan this QR code. It's going to let you download or sign up and download a some templates that I have for you. So some Canva templates to help you create this just to make your life a lot easier so you're not starting from scratch. So the first post is to promote your services. So just share a photo of you, whether you're speaking or writing, and then I want you to write a caption that will kind of go with that post. If you're speaking, talk about how you're preparing for a speaking engagement, or how Toastmasters has been helping you on your journey and what you're going to be working on or speaking about next. The second post I want you to do is to showcase your expertise. So this is one of my favorite ones. This is where you can share. Oftentimes people think it's so easy for some of the things we do, but then we know behind the scenes actually all the work we do. <laughs> so this is what is an example that I did for an Instagram post. What people see is the Instagram post. But what they didn't see is all of these other things that had to go into building the skill set to share that Instagram post. So I want you to think about your industry. Maybe it's uh, speaking. What people see, you writing a speech or speaking on stage. Well, what they don't see, writing the speech, the fear of overcoming speaking, the practice and the hours you put in. So you're going to get access to this template where you can literally go in and just update the colors, the words so that you make it personalized for you. And then the third one I want you to create is a connection post. So the theme for this one is the professions you had before becoming a speaker, writer, blogger, photographer, whatever it might be. And I love doing carousels. So that's what this is. This is a carousel where you have different design slides and you just are going to go through and update it. So you're going to have access to this. What I want you to first do is go 
and input your hook. So you'll just update the number of professions you had before you started your business or speaking or whatever it is that you're doing today. And I want you to replace the photo with you. So it's not me because I'm not you. And then update your font to whatever your brand colors are or the font types to your branded font types too. Then in the middle slides here, this is where we're gonna share your story. So these are all different design slides. If you've never used Canva, I would maybe say this is a more advanced one for you then, so maybe just focus on one of the other two topics. Um, but here, you're gonna just open up the template and you're gonna share kind of your journey that got you to where you are today. So you'll see, mine are very short, and that's what I want you to encourage you to do. So have like a title, what was the year and what was your job at that time, share a little bit of what that was like, and then share why it didn't work out or why you changed careers. You're gonna kind of take us through a journey, and then I want you to stop that and share with us where you're at today. And then the final slide of this design that you're gonna share is really what you do today. And invite people to follow you, share your tagline if you have one, or what it is that you do or who you help. And then I want you to update your own photo as well. This type of post is so great to help you connect with your audience and it allows them to get to know you a little bit more while also planting the seed as to what it is that you do. So you are going to use Canva for this. If you've never used Canva that before, then this is a little bit more advanced. But honestly, these three posts that I'm sharing with you have been some of my top performing posts. So I have a good idea it's going to work really well for you. So as a quick recap, what we chatted about today was really the six elements that are helping you create your professional brand and how we're going to use those six elements to infuse it into your content. We then talked about the social media journey and the content journey and why it's important to be consistent with the content you're posting because really it helps people build that like, know, and trust factor and then choose you. And then we shared, or I shared with you, three posts that you can create today. You can use those templates, create them today or tomorrow, and then share them next week. And I would absolutely love if you tagged me in those posts because I would love to see them and it would be great to get to know you a little bit more. And ultimately, this is really how we create that like, know, and trust on social media. And so with this information, I hope you're ready to go from becoming a choice to the choice in your industry. So if you guys have any questions as you start to use the templates, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I would love to see them get shared, but really you're gonna start building that presence that lets people know who you are, what you do, and how they can work with you. So feel free to scan this. And if anyone has any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, okay, Trusty, I feel like I said your name wrong. I'm so sorry if I did. I'm curious what application you're using for your slides. Is it good old PowerPoint or something better? Oh, I'm using Canva. I love Canva a lot. <laughs> so that's what I'm using for my slides. Dira, are we going to get templates sent to our email. Yes, so what you'll do is when you scan this, it's gonna ask you to put in your name and your email, and then when you do that, you will receive an email automatically with a Google Doc and the templates. You can also use the QR code to get them too, yes. Um, Juan, LinkedIn has analytics about who is seeing your posts. Is there something similar in other platforms? So on LinkedIn, you can have an idea, yeah, if who's like seeing your posts, especially if you have the premium account. On the other platforms, you can also see who's liked your content and who's commented. You aren't able to necessarily see who's just watched it. It does depend on the platform though. So some platforms do have that um, available, others don't. So hopefully if there's like a platform you're really curious about, feel free to ask me that. Um, Josh, my CEO is asking us to come up with a plan to use TikTok, but I feel like our specific customer is on LinkedIn. Advice. Ooh. All right, Josh, do you mind sharing with me? And if you want to come off mute, what is the business that you guys are with? 
Yes, the business is Influential You, and we work with ambitious business professionals um, to work on their processes for their company. Okay. So, yeah, you're more targeting, like, other entrepreneurs, CEOs, people who own their business. Yeah. I would say LinkedIn is probably a much more effective strategy for you guys. And being really intentional with the way you're engaging on that platform and who you're connecting with. And if you have questions about that, feel free to reach out to me. We can definitely chat. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right. Thank you all so much. I know I'm at my, my red time, but I didn't get muted yet. So I did okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Please connect with me on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook. And again, if you guys have any questions ever, do not hesitate to reach out. I'm more than happy to connect. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Brittany. And we will give you our applause, which is um, shaky fingers. I love it. Because you can't hear <laughs> applause virtually.